Well, um, I would like to very briefly introduce you now to uh, a piece of software called Tropy. Um, this is a knowledge management software which uh, mainly lets you associate um, image files with the respective metadata. Um, the rationale behind this program is basically the idea that uh, for humanists, for people who work uh, with archives, um, modern technology has been uh, a great benefit. We now have the ability to carry in our pockets with us every day high resolution cameras, which means that um, we can uh, bring our, our work home with us. It's not necessary to travel quite as much and to spend quite as much time in archives as it used to be. Uh, and this is where Tropy comes in. It's meant to help you with that process because um, basically, especially when you work with large-scale data, you can't really rely on your memory alone to uh, deal with all the metadata and especially the rights information and such. Um, this software is maintained by um, the same organization that also maintains uh, Zotero and Omeka, which is uh, software that you may be fam familiar with already. Um, and it's available at tropy.org, which you can see here. Uh, it is free and open source software. Uh, it's available on Windows, Mac and Linux. Um, you can see also here the um, GitHub page where you can actually look at the code and where you can post issues if you have any. Um, I also highly recommend the uh, documentation page, which you can, can get through here, um, the user guide, where if you have any questions about it, if you're trying it out, this will probably answer whatever questions you have. Um, I'm going to show you the software itself now. Um, this is the first thing you see when you install Tropy for the first time. It's going to ask you for a name for your project. I'm just going to write demo. Uh, and it's going to ask you where you want to save this. I'll just save it here. And so this is what you're looking at. Um, and the, the, the project file really represents whatever um, scale you want. It's, it can be very large scale, it can be an entire dissertation that you're working on or a master's thesis, whatever, all the information, all the image data you can bring into here. So the first thing you would you want to do is import images. Uh, and let's bring in this what I've prepared here. Um, I'm using some example images uh, that I made myself because we don't want to deal with copyright issues. Um, but um, you can see everything is imported uh, in here. Um, if you look on the right side, here is the metadata field. Um, if I select a picture, here is where I can enter all the metadata um, for the picture. And this is really the first thing you want to do after importing because um, you will very likely forget to do this. You'll not remember a couple of months down the road what the, the exact data is, what the rights are. If the sooner you do it, the better. You'll always regret waiting too long to do this. Um, you can select between different um, metadata schemes. Uh, these come with the program itself. It has some inbuilt Tropy defaults for different kinds of data. It also comes with Dublin Core, which is, of course, one of the most uh, widely used um, metadata schemes. So you can select whatever is most uh, applicable for you. Or you can go, go to Edit Preferences and uh, Templates. You can create your own metadata. Uh, template um, by simply selecting something that exists maybe that would be a good starting off point you can duplicate this and then create let's say uh, scheme whatever just some name every scheme needs a URI a unique URI um, and you can then select what kind of uh, 
what kind of files this is going to represent, um, who the creator is, uh, some description, let's say, yes, yes, whatever. And if you click on create, then you can select all the different properties that you want to uh, add to your material here. Um, there's different types of properties that you can label and different kinds of data types. You can select is this mandatory or not. I mean, you can see it here. Um, whether you need default values and if something is going to be consistently the same for all your files, you can make it completely read only. Um, yes. Uh, one thing to notice here, it will remind you specifically um, with this little symbol here to add the rights. Again, this is probably the most important information that you should add as quickly as possibly and not to forget about because that's not some trouble that you want to get into because you didn't properly respect people's rights um, with this data. Okay, if we open some random image, this is the single item view. Um, and here we can do all sorts of um, modifications to the image itself. Um, what's important to notice here is that Tropy uh, will never modify your original data. Um, your data will be completely safe. All of the modifications that you make here will be saved uh, in the Tropy project. So you can be completely uh, safe. You don't need to worry about losing something or damaging your material. Um, so you can experiment as much as you want. You can rotate, of course, basic stuff like that. And you can rotate in bulk if all your material is in is mis misaligned or whatever. You can mirror um, and you can do basic uh, stuff like brightness, contrast, hue, um, the sort of thing that you would expect really. Um, we have also sharpen. It doesn't do much in this picture, you probably don't even see the difference, but this is very useful for any kind of uh, handwritten material because it makes the, the letters stand out much more from the page than it otherwise would. So um, yeah, for, for writing and for manuscripts this is very useful. And uh, inverting colors is very nice if you ever, for example, work with microfilm data which comes in inverted colors. Um, and down here is a notes field. You can add whatever it is that you need for this material. Um, I need, I personally very frequently work with um, charters, images of medieval charters. So this would be a good place, for example, to add transcriptions for a certain piece if you need it. Um, you can add you know, citations, references, all sorts of things. Um, and if I add something in here, then you see it down here in the notes field in the broader list view. Um, one more thing to mention here would be, uh, again, if you're working with um, things like um, manuscripts that contain several pages, you can also um, connect or merge several entries by selecting all of them. You go right click merge selected items and then you have one entry with three pictures. Okay. Uh, yes? Titles appear to be MV5 hashes or something like yes, that. Yes, this is. Is that trophy or.? No, this, is, this was just from the material that I used. Okay. These were just the file names. So it's going to display here whatever the file name. So when you merge, what appears as the file name of the merge? Well, right now, this is the entry here. When you export it, you then can decide how you want to. But how it's going to. The concatenation of things? Mm -hmm. And you can also do things like add even more by taking a selection. And now you have a selection here and that's now a separate entry also. Um, yes, uh, then on the left side over here, 
we have lists and tags. Uh, lists are very straightforward as you would expect them to be. You can create as many lists of, uh, of entries as you want. You can have an entry be a part of as many lists as you would like. Uh, and if you delete an item from a list, of course, it's not deleted from the, from the database. And as I said, uh, it's not going to be deleted permanently anyway, because uh, Tropy doesn't affect your original materials. Um, you have to consider when managing your database that um, this is not a, a cloud software of any kind. This is very much based on what you have on your disk. So if you want to be mobile, if you want to use this, say, on your laptop, you have to move all your data and the project file over here on, onto this machine uh, so that you can use it. This uh, could be seen as a, as a weakness for some people. I think it's actually nice that you have some software where uh, you, know, you can at least be certain that it's uh, you know, respecting your privacy and it doesn't uh, connect to anything unnecessarily. Um, yes? This URI, I assume it was linked because I saw in the URI that there was a Troopy thing. Mm -hmm. Is that supposed to be a link to some kind of account? Um, it's, I think it's just for, um, the, for the uniqueness uh, purposes. So it's, it's like a namespace. Um, I don't know that it actually checks, uh, that it actually makes a connection. But you do need to have unique sort of namespaces for your field so that it, it's not the same. Um, but yeah, I can show, uh, let's make a new list, whatever, demo list, and you just move it over here and then you have your list. Very simple. Um, so, uh, and what I wanted to say also is that, uh, Ideally, you'll have all of your images in one directory. You don't necessarily have to, but it makes it a little bit easier if you move things around and then you have to uh, point the project file at the material again. It can be a bit cumbersome to uh, then again find all your pictures and make sure everything points at the right place. So the easiest way to do it is to have all your pictures in one directory, but it's not absolutely necessary. Um, finally, we have tags. Um, again, you can create your own, you can define them, you can as associate them with a color, and any number of tags can apply to a given entry. Uh, what this is very useful for, um, especially in our machine learning um, context, and this is a bit of an advanced application uh, for of Tropy, is that you can, for example, um, because Tropy accepts CSV files for import, um, you can have your machine learning classifier algorithm output CSV files in which uh, a certain image has its uh, classification result as a tag. And so then you can import that into Tropy and this makes it very uh, easy to visualize your results. For example, you can then filter by tag to see all of the images that were wrongly classified or um, you know, ha had false positives, false negatives, whatever. And just by visualizing this, you may then discover that there are certain patterns or certain features that make a correct evaluation or an incorrect evaluation um, more likely. Um, so yeah, this is a bit of an advanced application, but um, this is something you can quite easily set up, this sort of pipeline. Um, well, these are, yeah, the, the most basic features. Um, I found this software to be quite useful. I've used it for a while now, uh, and I hope you'll try it out and find it hopefully useful as well. Thank you.